Hey guys, it's Infinite Potatoes, and welcome to the guide to getting better at Star Wars Battlefront. This guide is for all players from Star Wars Battlefront, for someone who just got the game, to someone who's had the game for over a year. Now, we're going to split this into three different categories and go through them. The three topics are, raise your KD, strategies, and bettering. Let's start with raising your KD. Now the first thing you need to do is not die ever again. Well, that's not gonna happen. But there are a few ways for you to die less and gain more kills. Don't rush into combat. Here are three different examples, the first one being me rushing into combat. Then I show what happens when I wait for the right moment. Then, once taking out the first batch of enemies, I move on to the second batch, but I'm staying right where I am, getting kills. Moving up periodically and knowing that where you're going is enemy free will result largely. And even here in this footage, it results with me getting a great flank. Now this is the second one, I'm playing Sabotage, and I'm defending a generator. Watch, I get over a thousand point streak without rushing into action. Playing smart leads to less deaths and a higher kill. Okay, the second tip for raising your KD is, play the map to your advantages. Everyone has different playstyles, different advantages, and disadvantages. What you want to use is your advantages to the map you are playing on. Here's a little chart I made for showing the different places you can go to help yourself. For example, you know that you're a great in close quarters combat, then there is no reason for you to go into long range combat. The red zone on the chart is long range. Use these images for example, and come back if you need to. The second topic is strategies. Now this topic has a lot of tips. As we go on to this topic, the, the tips will become more advanced. Starting off with using the cover to your advantage. If you diligently use the cover, you will become a harder target to hit. I have a few examples of me using the cover around me. Even if it's a small crate, it can be a huge difference in a gunfight. The first clip, I fight with two very good players. I probably would have died if it wasn't for the crates. The second clip, I have a huge disadvantage. I'm on low health, there's two of them, and they have the high ground. This third clip is a little bit different because I use the unnatural landscape around me for my advantage. Now I'll slow it down so you can see it better. Now 
That clip, you can go back and watch and see, I move in and out of the shield, making me an extremely hard target to hit. Now, we are moving on to using the right gun for the right location. Now this seems to be obvious, but watch the difference of effectiveness when I use the right gun for my location compared to when I don't. This is me being ineffective because I'm using the wrong gun for the wrong location. The guys are too far away, my gun is too close range. Now let's say you do end up with one of these gunfights where you are not prepared. For example, you have a super close range pistol and the enemy has a longer range rifle. Now you will almost certainly be outgunned, but what you can do to prevent this is closing the gap. As seen here, I am too far away from my target, so I use my jump pad to make my gun better for its location. Tilt peeking, one of the more advanced techniques that I didn't even know for almost a year. Now that doesn't mean it can't be used by every skill level. Now for this to work, you must be in third person. What is tilt peeking, you may ask? All it is, is you moving the camera around to be able to see more enemies. Here are a few examples to what I'm talking about. This is a super useful thing to know. Now, onto the last and hardest part of the strategy section, slicing the pie. Now I have a little diagram I made, I know it's not amazing, but here it is. The red dot is representing the enemy, and the green is you. As the red dot pushes forward in attacking, you make slight movements backwards or around the corner. I have a few actual examples here. You can see here in every clip, the enemy's moving forwards, and I'm moving back into cover where they cannot shoot me. Now onto the final topic, better aim. Now I can't make you have the world's best aim instantly, or maybe even at all, but there are a few tips I can give you. The first thing is, is just to play. The more you play, the better you get. You can't get worse from playing more. The second thing is sensitivity. Now if you haven't already found your perfect sensitivity, there are a few things I can say. The lower your sensitivity, the more accurate and stable your aim will be, but the higher gives you faster reaction time. Now, what you have to do is find that balance in between. What I did at first was raise my sensitivity 10% once a week until I got to 100, or got settled somewhere else. Next thing is to aim forward. What this means is don't run around with your reticle aiming at the ground. I have an example here in the background. You can see what happens if I aim forward. By aiming forwards, I mean aim where an enemy can pop out. Watch and see the reaction speed. Now yes, I could have killed him if I wanted to, but that would just waste more time. Now this is the last tip for better aim, and the last tip of the video, jitter peeking. Jitter peeking is the movement of a player moving in and out of covering while firing shot. Now this is one of my favorite tactics. This can actually help with better aim too. I have footage in the background showing how it's done, 
how useful it is, and how to do it. Now I thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something from it. Make sure to drop a like, go back and check out the map references, and subscribe. And may the force be with you on the battlefront.